Hello and welcome back to this edition of Minstrels on the Block. Special guest Gary Palmer. You see this picture here? There is not enough O's in cool. <laughs> As Gary and what year was this? Uh, October of 1976. Cool. So Gary, okay, Pandora's box was opened. People gave you money. Girls came up to you. You traveled. So please continue. Well, I, I, I was a, I was a vagabond through my twenties. For the most of the part, I've, I've lived in Nashville. I lived in North Atlanta, uh, North, you know, Atlanta. I li- lived in Anaheim, California. Uh, spent time, played a m- little music here and there. And um, during my days in it, in Atlanta, I, it were lean. It, it was lean times. It was nothing for me to be, go two or three days without having something to eat. And um, one day I hadn't had anything to eat for a couple of days and uh, my friend that I was staying with hit the guitar player in his band says, Gary, can you play country music? I said, I don't know why. He says, well, I got some friends that need a guitar player tonight and it pays, I don't know, it's $60 or something, which was a lot of money then. And I was saying, and I get paid tonight? And he says, yeah. I said, yeah, I can play country. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I couldn't. I was really bad. <laughs> but I showed up and and I played and I got the, they 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 paid me, and so uh, I learned that was that was a really learning experience because uh, a lot of my career I I, I called it a hired gun. I was mm-hmm. I, I was a I did a lot of pickup work. Uh, you know, hi, my name's Gary. Where do you want me to put my amp? Uh, mm-hmm. When do we get paid, and can I run a tab? Yeah. You know, the, the, all the important yeah, questions. Yeah, important. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I got married uh, around in in my late twenties, and and finally I had responsibilities, and that was a blessing and a curse. You know, I, I stopped being a vagabond, and I started playing all the time then mm-hmm. you know because before that I would play for a little while and I'd make a little money and I'd go somewhere else mm-hmm. until I spent my money and then I would yeah. I'd make a little money and I'd go somewhere else but since uh, since 1980 I've pretty much played at least every weekend mm-hmm. uh, except for there was some down times here and there but mm-hmm. uh, I um the last time I was on the road was 1988, and I signed a tour with a band up in the Northeast. I signed a three-month uh, uh, contract with them, and we played uh, like Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, as far as New Hampshire, Michigan, and uh, seemed like everywhere, every time we played. Uh, we were going to be the last band they were going to have a go to a DJ and I started doing the math and I realized that how much it cost to, to be on the road and how much I was making and I did the math and I was thinking well I can go home and play Friday and Saturday night and actually have more money <laughs> at the <laughs> end of the week Yeah. so uh, I Stopped traveling after '88, and I've essentially been here in in uh, in Columbus uh, since then. But I've I've played East Alabama more than I didn't. I haven't played in Columbus as as much as m- m- many of my peers and my because uh, uh, I I played a lot of I played a lot of jobs that people didn't want to play honky tonks and 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 what we called cut and shoots <laughs> and uh but i i just i just wanted to play I, yeah. you know and and i didn't turn my nose up to any job yeah. i, I just, if they if they were going to pay i was playing yeah because that's I, I you know like i said once pandora's box was open that's all i've ever wanted to yeah. do i mean i through through the years I, I worked six days a week and played five nights a week or Worked five days a week, played six nights a week, or worked six days, played the weekends. I did that for about ten years or so, and until I got my house in order, and and uh, 
then I kind of semi-retired. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had my first child and went back to school and, and went back to work mm -hmm. and did the same thing again. And uh, two divorces later and two babies later, I'm, I'm back to being a musician full time. And uh, I've learned that it's, uh, it's a privilege to uh, be able to play music for a living. Definitely. Uh, it's a semblance of a living, but I, I, I'm, through what I did in my earlier years, I, I'm lucky that it doesn't take much for me to survive. Yeah. I'm not very materialistic, so it, I, I, I can survive on a lot less than most people. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm truly blessed that I get to, to be a musician. And, uh, and a TV show host. I was, yes. Uh, in, in 2000 and, and part of 2001, I, WCGT TV 16 in Columbus, which has now become the Christian station here mm -hmm. in, in Phoenix City, uh, I had a show called In the Spotlight. And uh, it's much like the show you're doing. I, I would have local artists. And uh, I, had, I did 29 shows uh, but I, I produced it all. I, I sold the advertisement. I, I, you know, I wrote the theme song. I, I, I pretty much did everything but film. <laughs> but it was, it was, a, it was a great learning experience for me. I learned a lot. And who were the the names that you uh, interviewed? Some of the people. You well, uh, there was local, t like Kenny Thomas, mm -hmm. from Columbus. Henry Conley was one of them. Um, uh, my friend Rick Roper was on one of my shows. Uh, then I had some other people like, uh, who's the singer for Driving and Crying? Kevin Kinney. Kevin Kinney, yeah, he was on one of my shows. He was one of my guests. We did, uh, uh, I want to say, 14 shows at The Loft. And while I was there, I, if if they had an artist in, I yeah, I would fish them in, and they would be on, <laughs> they would be my guests before their their show. We'd do nice. we'd do our show. So I was lucky to 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 meet uh, some very very talented people, and uh, it was it was it it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, but then my youngest daughter was born, and I, and I no longer had the time to, yeah. to do the show, so it kind of had to put it by the wayside. And uh, and since then, uh, it's it's been it's been a, a quite a journey these last forty years. Uh, uh, I started doing the numbers. It's like wow, I, I've been doing this a long time, I guess. And packed a lot into it. <laughs> I've I've yes, I've seen a lot and done a lot. I don't have a lot of thing. I don't have a lot to show, but I've got lots of stories. Lots of stories. I can tell you lots of stories. <laughs> very cool and entertaining stories. Yeah, they're very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm still here. Uh, the, you know, I've, I've pushed the limits when I was young. I, I really... Lord has something still left for me to do or I wouldn't be here. I've heard some of the stories. The Lord has been watching over this man. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. And well, to to take that one step farther, uh, in uh, O ten last year in O ten in ten, two thousand ten, on Memorial Day, my oldest daughter was killed in a car wreck here, in, uh, just up the road, and uh, that loss was hard, and uh, changed my life mm -hmm. yet another time, put me on another. And so I, I've got a 10-year-old now, and I, I cling to her really, really tight. <laughs> she wants to be a singer when she grows up, so we're going to see if her voice will, will grow into it. <laughs> I hope she doesn't, because I know what she's up against. But if, <laughs> yeah. if she wants to, I'll do like my parents did. My parents uh, stood by me. They never wanted me to do what I, I'd done, but they've always supported me, and they've always given me a... You know, I, during my down times, uh, between divorces and whatnot, I, I could always go home 
and they would feed me and get me back up running again, <laughs> get me ready to go back one for another try. And uh, so, if my daughter ever gets there, I'll be that. I'll be that for her. But knowing what I know about the business, I kind of hope she'll choose something else. <laughs> go be a doctor. <laughs> I've, I, I, I've told both of my children that the only thing I ask of you is graduate college before you have children. And my oldest understood it very well. My young one, she, it's, she doesn't pay any attention to dad. They were, they were as different as night and day. But, um, music business, it's a, it's, it's a hard... It's a, as my dad would say, it's a hard road to hoe. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it's been a pleasure in many ways. It's been a trial in many ways. But I wouldn't do anything different if I had it all to do over again. Uh, I love. I, 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 I did this for so many years as a job. I never realized how much I truly loved it until about four years ago. Yeah. And and. Uh, since then, I, you know, I treasure every time I get to go and work. I, I thank God every time, I, you know, I get to go out and play and play for people and I act and get paid. It's it's a, it's a it's a it's a, it's a it's a privilege. Yeah, it, it truly is. And like you once told me. There's nothing that compares to it. Nothing. It's, uh, like I say, it's the most addictive drug I've ever encountered. <laughs> it, it's, uh, one, once the bug gets you, it's, you've learned. I have learned. <laughs> <laughs> and once that bug gets you, you, it, it, you, you know, it's hard to let it go. It is. Check out another one of his songs, and we'll be right back. 